Uh, hello, everyone. Very excited to, to start the second panel of the day related to digital onboarding and biometrics. My impression is that it used to be the hottest topic in the industry. Now the hottest one is AI. Luckily, biometrics has a lot of AI in it, but I will try to present you a different perspective today. Uh, my name is Viktor Jaszczak. I'm uh, head of Central Eastern Europe at FaceFee. We specialized in uh, digital onboarding and authentication with the use of multiple biometrics. And today I will guide you through the uh, hidden costs of digital onboarding. Uh, the, probably the most important topic will be customer experience and abandonment, how it impacts your business. We will do some mathematics, but don't worry, not to not to complicate it, and I will guide you through it, and I will give you some guidance you know, uh, to take away from, from this presentation. So why customer experience is so important? Uh, because of the fierce competition we have uh, nowadays in the uh, financial services, customer experience is basically a key brand differentiator. Uh, customers are already used to, uh, used to it. They are willing to pay more uh, for a service if they can get a great customer experience and in return, you know, better value, uh, time savings, uh, and, and so on. And 84% of companies increase revenue after they improve the customer experience. So it's a really, really important thing and uh, the key to, win, uh, key to win in the market. So what is the cost, actually, of onboarding abandonment? It can damage your revenue, brand reputation, and market share. 42% of customers report uh, abandoning sign up to a new service because the onboarding process was too long or it was not good enough or they didn't like it. So you can say 40% or even half of them will, will drop out because the, uh, the customer experience was bad. And having abandonment rate can boost ac customer ac acquisition by 29% and increase the revenue by 26%. So we can see the direct impact on, on the business. If we consider the banking use case, the, the most, the simplest digital onboarding process uh, in, on, on mobile or web, let's say firstly we have to take the photo of the identity document, we will have the uh, document capture, OCR, maybe we'll use NFC. Secondly, we need to make, uh, we need to do facial capture. Uh, with liveness test, so we make sure this is a live person doing the onboarding. We compare the photo to the uh, photo from the document. We might do uh, prior onboarding verification, so if whether this person has been previously registered with uh, with our institution. In the background, we can do some identity validation, so maybe AML checks, uh, blacklists, our internal or external, uh, or other biometrics, and then the account is created. So a simple onboarding consists of many steps, and on, uh, on, which, on each step we can lose a customer because the process wasn't ideal. And what are actually the reasons for it? First of all, manual document capture. So we ask our uh, clients to, to capture the document by themselves. They have to click on the screen, and maybe they will take a bad photo of it, they will cover some areas of the document. So it causes internal and external uh, uh, problems. So for us, maybe we have a bad image of the document, we don't see uh, the date of birth, and for the users, then they have to redo it. Customers need to fill in the form as opposed to automatic OCR, and this is so frustrating when I go to a hotel and I have to fill in the long form with my, with my data rather than somebody taking my ID and doing it automatically. Uh, the uh, liveness test takes too long uh, and is uh, not user-friendly, so uh, in this, in, this, uh, in this regard, active liveness is, uh, is something that we should move on. The process will take more than 60 seconds or even, even longer. Uh, and we ask the user to change the devices. So they, they want to start on desktop, but then we re, uh, redirect them to, to, to mobile. And at this point, we can lose as many as 20% of the users. So first time success rate is the key metrics to consider when you choose an onboarding solution. So let's take an example, really simple example, that we have to uh, onboard 10,000 users uh, in a year. And a simple cost analysis is, uh, as you can see, the first provider charges 80 cents per, uh, per user, the other one, one euro. So we have 8,000 versus 10,000. So the math is simple at this point. 
So one provider is more expensive by, by 2,000 uh, euro. But then we have to consider what is the first time success rate. Because even if the onboarding costs are higher, superior first time success rate uh, will have a better impact on the, on the revenue, uh, will uh, direct us to a smaller uh, abandonment rate, and we will have better earnings. So in this scenario, provider A uh, has a 75% success rate, and uh, provider B 92. And we consider lifetime account value of 160 euro. This is very uh, dependent on the business, and this is statistics for, for a retail client. And of course, for a business client, it can, it can go higher and higher. But the math, the math, when you do the math, it will still prove the point. So with the first, uh, first provider, uh, out of 10,000 people, 2,500, uh, we have 2,500 fail onboardings with the provider B, 800. And how does it compare then to, to the overall cost? So we mentioned before that 40% of users uh, drop off the process because of the poor user experience. So this is something that we can directly control uh, when we implement uh, something else or the process is better. So in this scenario, provider A lost 1,000 users because of the uh, bad user experience, and provider B uh, 336. So if we consider the potential revenue lost, the provider A uh, cost us 160,000, 168,000, and the provider B 53,000. So the the difference is really striking. We can see the you know the the first time success rate was 75% versus 92%. But even if the gap is lower, uh, the, the the difference will still be there. So if we consider an overall mathematics, provider A, uh, the total cost for provider A was uh, 176,000, and for provider B, 63,000. So we can say that uh, with provider B, we can save more than 100k euro. And this is not this is not everything, but to make it really simple, I try to uh, to put it in this framework. So what are the hidden costs, you might ask? Because there is a lot more in the process that you need to uh, consider. For example, what is the manual intervention inside our organization? Because maybe somebody has to uh, check the samples that were provided to the, uh, to the, you know, to the CRM. Uh, we need to employ more people to check the documents because the system was not bulletproof enough to detect fake IDs. Then, what if we have to do extra integrations because the provider only uh, gives us uh, a solution for one channel, for mobile, and doesn't cover web? Uh, what if they don't have additional biometrics? So if we want to implement voice as a multi-factor authentication, then what do we choose, right? And authentication with, with face, with behavior. So this is another RFP maybe, another internal pro process to choose a vendor a lot of costs. Uh, cost of fraud, obviously, uh, so financial losses, uh, regulatory fines, uh, internal manual checks, so every organization will have a cost associated to it. How much it costs them you know, to, to check a fraud or to, to detect it at a later stage. Uh, this is something very interesting that is uh, many times overlooked at, higher bandwidth and uh, CPU costs. So active liveness solutions, We'll need more frames and data to be sent to the CRM, to the, to the backend. So if we have millions of customers, uh, that, is really, that can really make a difference. And the solution has a high AI bias, so maybe it will not work uh, properly. The biometrics will not work uh, properly with, for people with different uh, ethnic background uh, and, and other factors. So what you should consider when looking for onboarding solution first time success rate, and I cannot stress it enough, and you should be asking your vendors for statistics from, uh, from the implementations, uh, how, how, how much they achieved. Automatic document capture with OCR and NFC reading. So we should take also uh, the burden from our end users that you know, they will not, might not be familiar with using the software, with using the mobile app or you know, biometrics, but we should make it simple enough that the, uh, the software itself will choose when to capture the document or when, when to capture a selfie. And of course, NFC reading uh, gives the, 
the highest security, pos security possible in terms of uh, remote uh, document upload. Uh, accuracy rate, so we can check uh, you know, the statistics for the biometric algorithm. Uh, this can be checked with National Institute of Technology, so vendors can uh, apply there to, for their so software to be tested. Anti-spoofing protection. So, uh, you know, we talk a lot about deepfakes, presentation attacks. This is really, this is really important. We have to make sure that the solution will detect deepfakes, uh, presentation attacks, you know, uh, screenshots or, uh, or, or other uh, type of frauds. And the industry, uh, industry standard is now passive liveness with iBeta level two. So iBeta level two, iBeta is a certification that uh, proves uh, that given uh, onboarding solution will detect deep fakes, uh, you know, uh, photos of high resolutions or masks. So a lot of frauds will already be rejected. And we need to think how inclusive the solution will be. So needs to have a low AI bias, needs to be accessible to people with disabilities. And that's where passive lightness is very useful because the user just needs to take a selfie. They don't need to move their head or wink or you know something else. So it will be already more inclusive to, to the uh, larger population. And if the software can work with older devices, then we can cover also you know, uh, less developed areas or areas with uh, lower, you know, lower speed of internet. This is really important. Some of the security and on compliance, of, obviously, uh, this is very important in banking, so we can ask the vendor whether they are tested by NIST, whether they have ISO certifications, whether they, whether they detect uh, presentation attacks, and obviously local regulation is, uh, is important. Last but not least, uh, just to introduce uh, face fee, uh, we specialize in digital onboarding and authentication with the use of, of biometrics, and we are multi-biometrics company, so we provide facial biometrics, voice, behavioral, and fingerprint. Uh, we work globally with clients mostly from the financial sector. Uh, our first time success rate is an example from a banking client is 92%, but we can go as high as 97%, it's also a real statistics. We are tested by NIST, and uh, the liveness check that we do is, uh, is less than a second, so it can be used very quickly for onboarding, but also for facial authentication when you log into the, to the app, when you need to approve the transaction, or you have a device change and you need to make sure that this is still the same person. Uh, face fee solution uh, has proven to speed up onboarding by 40%, and I've been checking a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, solutions on the market. Last week I did an onboarding that took two minutes uh, with, with something else. Whereas ours can do as little as 30 seconds. We cut compliance and operational costs by 50%, mainly by reducing manual input required at the institution. And we increased digital account openings by over 35% with a, with a banking customer. So this is how we, that's our presence uh, globally. We have, as, as an identity vendor, we have the largest number of banks in the portfolio. Company is headquartered in Spain, so uh, we grew the business in Latin America, where we are market leaders. We have also very strong uh, branch in APAC, working with uh, Korean government, with Samsung hospitals, and other institutions. And we are part of the EMEA team since last year, rolling, rolling the solution uh, to our markets, working with you know having local presence in the regions like Central Eastern Europe, with, in Africa, uh, and Western Europe. These are some of the references that we have. We have a stand today, so uh, feel free to come. We can show you the demo, real demo, how it works. Uh, we have some fake IDs to also to prove you how we detect you know, fake identities. And if you want to know more, uh, yeah, thank you very much.